I'm going to show you how to tie today is a, a variation on the Robert's Yellow Drake. It's really just a style of fly. Um, and if you change the colors of the hair, uh, you tie a different fly. So anyway, um, this, isn't, this is less about instruction about how to actually tie the fly than it is, <clears throat> than it is sort of a lesson in, in good materials. I actually uh, went around the fly shop the other day just looking to see what I had for deer hair that was really, really quality. And um, what I came up with were, were a couple of things, and then I kind of put the pattern together after that. Um, first of all, I found this piece of white deer hair that's thick right through the tips, but it's also, if you notice, really even. What that means for the fly tire, for production fly tire, is uh, you don't have to use a hair stacker. You have to do is clip it pull it straight from the hide and clip it and you're going to have a nice uh, even set of tips. So anyway, so I kept digging around to see what else I had. I found that nice deer hair, that nice white patch of deer hair and um, so I started digging around to see what else I might be able to put together and I found this really nice patch. It's hard to tell because I've used it up. I mean it's been a really nice, it's a really nice patch of a dark done dyed deer hair. And, um, sort of the same thing. The tips are pretty darn even. Um, they're a little jagged, but the real Robert Drake, uh, you know, the way Clarence Roberts used to time, you want it to be a little jagged. It kind of acts as a shuck. I'll show you that in a little bit. Then the same thing with this piece of moose. You know, I didn't need a piece of moose. I've got patches and patches of moose. But when it comes to fly tying, if you can buy a good piece of material, buy it. Buy it that day. I don't care if you need it or don't need it. Someone needs it, you'll need it sooner or later. But even here, you can see... I mean, there's some long ones, but these tips are relatively even. And let me show you how that translates into putting a fly together. Oh, I also did this. Those girls are putting this in their hair. This thing was worth, you know, ten bucks. But I didn't sell them all. I kept them. Even though you could get like a thousand dollars for a grizzly saddle. I kept some and uh, kind of hid them, hid them away. So now I kind of feel obligated <laughs> to use them. And, and uh they're going to work out nicely. We're going to tie a Roberts Drake style fly and we're going to tie an Isonychia. So anyway, so here we go. Um, one is I like to lay my materials out where I can get to everything quickly and easily. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is crank my thread down. I'm kind of frugal that way. Crank my thread down so I don't have any cuts here. I'm just going to grab the tip of that and get it started. I don't have to cut anything. Um, again, it's not totally instructional video, so um, I'll just show you how it goes. Um, next thing's next. I'm going to grab a piece of mousse. Again, I pull it straight from the hide so those tips are nice and straight, or as straight as they're going to be. And I'm going to pull out the long ones as best I can. Sort of find some even ones, hide the tips there, and pull out the short ones. So now I can throw this in, measure it against the hook shank, like to be a little bit longer. Tie this in. So good, no stackers, no picking up tools. That's going to make things faster every time. Grab the tips here and just give them, give them a good hard jerk. Pop them right off, no scissors. Get your thread up to the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and use my scissors to stand up this hair. Pull it straight up from the hide. Grab the tips. Can you see any of that? Pull it straight up from the tips. Go straight up from the hide. Clip it off. Same sort of thing. Just going to go ahead and pull out the long ones. Pull out the short ones, measure it against the shank, clip, tie this in, no stacking yet, no tools. Every time you pick up a tool, you're just slowing it down. Good materials, you don't need it. I kind of push that down so it gets around the shank, Whoop. gather the fibers with the thread. Pull hard, straight down. When you pull, when you pull the bobbin, always pull stir. Keep your barrel of the bobbin straight so you don't break the thread. That'll break the thread. 
So we get this nice flare, kind of makes a shuck almost. Just cross hatch this back up. And then pull out some of this nice white post material. Straight up from the hide, grab the tips, pull out the short ones. There are really pretty much no long ones in this one, so just a really spectacular piece. Lay it in there, again no stacker. Get that flare, wrap your thread through the tips, that'll lock it to the shank. Crank it down, got some stuff sticking up there, that's fine. Go ahead and pick that up, put your thumbnail, fingernail right there, use that. Stand that baby up. Notice I have a longer length of thread here than I normally do. And all I'm going to do is kind of start gathering this post. And then back down, just make a nice tight post. When you get down here, I pull it pretty darn tight. I hold the post, but I pull it tight. And I build this up. I spend a lot of time on the post, more than any other part of the fly. I don't want that thing rolling around. Here, I like to sort of come up at a strong angle. You can see how that thread's not quite there. Put a wrap in there. Back around. And I'm going to catch this. I'll lock that post right down like that. And then I like to do it on both sides here. Similar kind of thing. Set the reverse. And I'll lock that down right there. Now that's not going to go anywhere. I mean that's not going anywhere. Take our million dollar feather. Throw that in. I wrap that all the way to the base of the post so it can't come out. I mean, you bend the hook before you pull that out of there. Parachuting. Start high on the post. And it's tight. Now that I've, because I've wrapped that, put, I've taken such care with that post to make it strong, I can pull this really tight. And each consecutive wrap goes under the previous. As far as number of wraps, it depends on the feather. Some have higher barb counts. Things like that. I'm going to kind of force an extra wrap in here. See how it's making this stick up. It might not be as pretty, but I got a little more hackle there. All right, then there's a the quick finish of the fly. I pull all this back and use my index finger to hold all that in place. I think it's easy. Pull everything tight. Brush it all back again. Nice clean clip. Now, just to be safe, I throw a half hitch in here and I throw it up against that post as far as I can. Again, brush it back. Throw a whip finish in here. Seven turns, try to catch all the all the little white hairs and whatnot. Make sure it's tight. Clip. Okay, so now I got kind of a messy fly. No big deal. Tied it nice and tight, pulled everything strong, so you kind of tweak it, push it around where you need it. Make it look pretty. Do some pre-tuning. Got some dangling hackles. Get those out of the way. Then fly tire's best friend. Giant dollop of glue. That'll soak right through. And then that's it. That's the Isomichia Robert Strake style.